and you know, back in the 04 season, you do everything right, you still get left out. No left, no being left out this time, Auburn 2010 national champions. Well, you know, through through no fault of anyone's own, the 04 team was left out. Through no fault of anyone on that team, the 93 team didn't get an opportunity to cap their perfect season. Certainly through no fault of their own, the 83 team, which went to bed thinking they had won a national title after winning the Sugar Bowl, wake up and, and find that that was taken away by voters. So uh, what happened eight days ago in Glendale was – uh, an amazing thing for this year's team. But Gene Chizik before the game said uh, that this game is about all those other players that have come through since 1957. 20 years from now, it'll be about this team. But for that moment, for that time, uh, it was about all those other teams. And we've kind of heard that, that sentiment from former players in the last eight days who are just elated, vindicated, on cloud nine about what happened out in the desert eight days ago. Well, Brad, you know, as you say that, Ace Atkins, a former Auburn player, did not, a, not a big star for Auburn, but had really his day in the sun when he was uh, put on the commemorative cover of Sports Illustrated back in 93, sacking Danny Werfel uh, in the Florida game. But he wrote the uh, – uh, the ending piece to the the new com commemorative issue that just came out, and he talked about all that and and how he said, you know, this 2010 team, this is your championship. But from all of us former players that were right there on the the doorstep, we really appreciate what you were able to do and come through. And Brad, I was at the game, and after that that you know, <laughs> it, it was typical Auburn style. Michael Dyer breaks that run. Everybody thinks the game's over with 10 seconds. And then to find out his knee touched on the six inch line, I mean, and and then you go back and you're like, well, Lord, you know, he's got we got to run another play, got to kick a field goal, something bad's gonna happen anyway. And when when finally Wes Byram's uh, kick went through the uprights, everybody celebrated for the second time, and I just took it all in and I looked in the stands and I just looked across and just just looked like so much relief on on every Auburn fan, young and old. Well, and you know, and and Brad, I hope that what this game, what this season does is it changes the expectation. It changes the mindset a little bit. I'm not talking about Auburn fans crossing over into delusion, but what I'm, what I'm hoping that we see now, because I, I think in the broadcast booth, and I go back to Tuscaloosa, when Auburn trailed Alabama 24 to nothing, there was no one who thought the game was over. In years past, that wouldn't have been the case. And when Auburn cut it to 24-14, to 14, I think everybody in the stadium, no matter what color shirt they had on, realized that Auburn was going to win that game. They were going to find a way to win that game. I didn't sense in our broadcast booth any worry, any fear, um, uh, any, uh, I guess, dark clouds on the horizon uh, when, when Matthews forced the fumble and knocked the ball out of Cam's hand. It just, you know, you've watched this team, and we had this out on the radio, 45 or 47 scoring drives for Auburn this year that were under the time left on the clock when that final drive started. So they'd done it before. And you just kind of saw, look, they've got the mindset they'll do it again. And, and like I say, what I hope that this uh, season, what I hope this, this championship does is – Take away some of the waiting for the other shoe to drop, waiting for something bad to happen. I hope Auburn fans soak up every bit of joy and happiness that this season has brought, and I hope they enjoy it until next season kicks off because they're the national champions until a new season starts. And uh, uh, I, like I said, I, I just think it's it's a new day for Auburn with this championship, and maybe some of those old fears are gone now, and Again, it's vindication and validation for a lot of folks. Brad, you're exactly right. And I had that conversation just yesterday with somebody, and I said, you know, I, I think, the, the uh, like you said, don't want to think Auburn fans are going to cross over into some delusional state. But, you know, Auburn has been right there. And, and, and I even heard Pat Dye say it today, you know, Auburn, no doubt he felt like one day would win a national championship. And it just seemed like – the pieces just couldn't ever fall together. We had, we've had the teams, and we've won several SEC championships, and we've been right there. But now that we have finally crossed the final barrier, that there's a new state, and then that, that Auburn expects to, to be in the hunt, you know, kind of what Alabama fans have always felt. You know, 
Auburn expects to be in the hunt year in and year out, no matter what you lose, no matter whatever, but being realistic about it. But you made a point just uh, just a second ago about your broadcast team. Uh, all of you guys, uh, Rod Bramlett, Stan White, Quentin Riggins, Paul Lill, and yourself, uh, how good, what is your perception of the Auburn ISP sports broadcasting team? Brad, I know it's going to be a little bit biased with you being a part of that, but, but kind of step back and, I mean, I, I, we really feel like here at Sports Blitz that, that all of you guys do a tremendous job. Well, the you know the Auburn Sports Network group has been around and been a team for a long time now. I mean, Stan, this is his 10th year doing radio uh, doing, doing uh, as a color analyst. 10th season. That's kind of hard to fathom. For Paul Ellen, I think it's 22, 23 years with the network. Uh, for Quentin Riggins, 20, 21 years. Andy Bertram almost 20 years. Rod, uh, seventh year as a play-by-play man, was on the network you know, before that. So it's, it's, it's a crew that knows what they're doing. They know, you know they're, they're able to maintain professionalism, whether the news is good or the news is bad for Auburn. And uh, I just think they do the best job around of uh, presenting the information that Auburn fans need to know, the information Auburn fans want to know, and doing it in a way that, that Auburn fans enjoy. That's the mission. I'm awfully proud to, to be in the booth with them every single week and um, looking forward to hopefully many, many more years with that team. Well, Brad, I tell you what, uh, you know, the, the national championship celebration coming up on Saturday, and uh, you know it's going to be packed. The gates, uh, it starts at 1. I think the gates open at 11 o'clock, and it's free admission. Uh, but you know that that stadium's going to be packed. But immediately, people shift gears and start talking about next year. Uh, as soon as the ball went through the uprights, I even heard Auburn fans, you know, what are we losing? What do we got coming back? Auburn losing three big players early to the draft. Nobody really shocked about Nick Fairley. And Cam Newton, but uh, Darvin Adams declares yesterday uh, the top receiver for Auburn. But, uh, you know, and all, everybody already uh, having their own perspective. I heard Andre Ware come up with some bogus uh, prediction saying Auburn could possibly go 4-8 and eight next year. Well, I guess anything's possible, but rea- reality, I mean, Auburn's got a, a great recruiting class from last year that'll be a year older. They got some good recruits coming in now, uh, and there's some players that just couldn't get on the field because of who, were, who was in front of them this year. And I don't realistically expect Auburn to go undefeated this year, but I don't also expect Auburn to have a losing record either, Brad. Yeah, I, I'll I'll bet my house and his that uh, I'm talking about Andre that that Auburn doesn't go four and eight in 2011. Um, I, you got to start with a coaching staff, and you have to start at the very top, and you start with a coach who, in the last seven years, has now been a part of three undefeated teams and two national championship teams, and a guy who's undefeated in bowl games, and a guy who, for the second consecutive off season, will keep his entire staff intact. Uh, after Jeff Grimes made the decision not to take the the same position he has at Auburn at Texas. So uh, I think you start with a coach who knows what it takes to build, and to build you can't just have a roof. You've got to have a foundation. You've got to have walls. You've got to have something sturdy to build on. They didn't come to Auburn to have one championship season. If they had come to Auburn to have one championship season and scatter, you would have seen guys taking other opportunities right now. But they came to Auburn to build, and everybody's pulling in that direction, from the athletics director, Jay Jacobs, to Gene Chizik, to his entire staff. And at signing day last year, almost one calendar year ago now, you looked at the Auburn recruiting class and said, best class in a long time, not just – there are very few, if any, projects or misses in this class. And what that means is you're going to have a number of guys who play backup roles this year, not just freshmen, but guys who were already at Auburn uh, that are going to play pivotal roles next year. Now, can you replace 24 seniors? Can you replace all those starts on the offensive line, poise and dependability in the receiving course? No, of course not. There's no way to replace that. But Auburn doesn't have a bear covered here. The coaches have built, uh, they've stocked, the, the talent, and it's going to be young and it's going to be unproven. But you got to understand that at some point, every player, all of those 24 seniors that are leaving Auburn as national champions were all once guys who had talent. They were just playing behind somebody else. So they were all in the same boat that this next group will be in next year.